Hi, my name is Gerd Kiss. I'm a Symbios postdoctoral fellow in the lab of Vijay Pandey, and I'm working on enzyme engineering. Enzymes are proteins. They speed up reactions tremendously. Some of the most proficient enzymes out there have a rate accelerations of 10 to the 17th. Um, so, in other words, reactions that would take almost 80 million years to happen um, because of these enzymes happen on the millisecond time scale in our bodies, which is our bodies can function and we can respond to things um, and we can take things that in nature are stable. A Snickers bar, I think, can survive a couple of years, but once we eat it, it gets digested within hours and we have that energy that is stored in the Snickers bar. The current approach to produce enzymes uh, today, um, whether it is to go after uh, producing drugs or whether to produce alternative fuels or to um, have currently toxic chemistries um, being uh, done in a green way, in, a, in an environmentally friendly way, um, currently enzymes are taken that are already existing in nature and these are then modified with random mutagenesis and directed evolution type laboratory um, uh, approaches where not a lot of rationale um, goes in um, and uh, a, a, a large number of experiments um, is, is required to actually find a candidate that does what we um, would like it to do. Okay. When we engineer proteins, we typically start with a protein structure from a public database. And then we focus on the active side of the protein and place our reagents or substrates into that active site in a way that it would actually um, catalyze the reaction. Then we put in amino acid site chains in the appropriate positions so that these reactions would actually be catalyzed. Um, and we then connect these site chains to the protein backbone and there are uh, up to 10 to the 19th possibilities for this particular step but um, only a few of those actually are feasible and uh, so the problem is now reduced to only 10 to the 6 um, possibilities and then by repacking the active site so to sandwich all of this that we need for the reaction with with things that are not really important for the reaction but that keep it all in place we now get it down to a th around a thousand uh, proteins that could, in theory, um, do this reaction. However, a lot of these don't do the reaction, and uh, to find out which don't and which do, to weed them out, we do molecular dynamic simulations, and we iterate back and forth between the simulation step and the design step until we find those few that will hold up in reality, uh, in, in, in experiments, um, and we then basically cut it down to 10 or to 50 proteins that we then actually go out and um, make and test in the lab. And so now we have become very good at making bad enzymes with this technology. What we would like to be in the near future is becoming good at making good enzymes. And from an academic point of view, that is a very interesting uh, task because the better you get at making something, the more confident you can be that you understand what you're making. But also from an applied point of view, now it is a good time to apply this technology to real life problems such as synthesizing molecules with anti-cancer activities. And we are working on something like that with a group here at Stanford where we are taking an existing protein and modifying the active site to perform the reaction the way we would like it to perform so that it, in the end the product gets released and this product has anti-cancer activities. Uh, more on that in the future. Stay tuned.